my name is Harry Harrington and today I'm speaking to you from my garden here in Aylesbury. Now this video is all about calcium, um, why we need it, why we need to make sure our bonsai receive it on a regular basis and what happened with me when I started switching from our hard water, tap water that we have around here I moved over to rainwater, which is a, a fantastic step forward because you don't have live scale or the chemicals that come from tap water. But I started to notice that my trees weren't growing in exactly the way that I wanted them to. And the reason I'm standing in front of this amazing big elm in the garden is just to is to make a video about calcium just a little more interesting than it might be. So, this really large elm was, was actually taken from high up on a hedge by apprentice Sean Stolp. Um, I think he has to climb ladders to get out of there, put the air layer in place. And in fact, he would have laid it in this area here and then if I uh, show you an image of the tree when I first received it from Sean, you can see that it was actually at quite a, a different angle. And I realized that the best way of using the material would be to, to turn it on its side and turn it into a raft, um, as you can see in the following images. So the tree was turned anti-clockwise onto its side and the root ball combed out so the tree could be planted really nice and flat on top of her in, the, in a very big pot. As you can see it really looked very very impressive and uh, just put my hand in there the scale is a big trunk. The tree has now been here growing in the garden um, at the foot of the, the very large willow tree that we have here and it's settled into a, a large half meter wide tub while I allow plenty of extensions to, to pick up the initial shoots and create some, some branches of an appropriate size for such a big trunk. So going back to calcium, when I stopped using tap water I also started using a lot of seaweed which is very useful because it contains magnesium which is something that helps build cell walls within plants and makes a, a more robust cell wall structure and i found really within half a season that everything greened up i wouldn't have the chlorine i didn't have the hard uh, the, i didn't have the lime scale that hard water produces and the seaweed as, as i say produces beautiful colors in all my trees and there were a lot of positive effects. But as time went on, over the next two or three years, I noticed there were a few species that just weren't growing in the way that they used to. They would um, not extend. And this was particularly was happening with my natives, my elm, my hawthorn, and there were a few other species like cedar, who just weren't happy about something. I couldn't put my finger on it. So late last year, noticing that one of my dogwoods, my corner species, were getting really, really slow and actually starting to die back. And realizing that this uh, cornus as a species really enjoys a, a chalky, high calcium um, environment or, or soil, I added some calcium to the soil surface. And literally within two weeks, the, the dogwood responded with huge extensions, something that hadn't happened for literally three or four years. And I realized that, you know, this was, this something was happening here and it was a lack of calcium. Um, this year, I applied calcium to the soil surface and I started using CalMag, which is um, a, a liquid silicon product, essentially giving calcium to the soil of all of my UK natives just to start to balance the calcium and magnesium levels in each of the trees. And 
growth rates, particularly in hawthorn, elm, um, prunus, particularly the mahalla cherries, cedar, have all vastly improved and I'm getting some really good extensions. The extensions are kept in check and they're really well distributed thanks to the, the Dano products that I'm also using, the bacteria that I'm using. But the calcium has just given a lot of my trees a really, really good boost. Now, my understanding is that the calcium in its role is slowly building up. And I understand that calcium is actually also contributes hugely to cell wall structure along with magnesium. And we need that ba balance of calcium and magnesium in our trees, in our fertilizers to get the very, very best growth habits and health in our trees. Now, one should be wary of using some calcium products that can raise the pH and be wary of applying them to azalea, uh, species such as azalea that are acid loving. Ace palmatum, you like to have more of a neutral pH and don't like too much calcium. So you need to do a little research, but certainly those UK natives um, will really, really benefit well. And I'll, I'll put across a, a list of all the species that I would recommend adding calcium to at the, at the bottom of this video. If you look at the growth in the uh, first couple of years from these old images, it's really quite insipid. It's not strong and coarse as I need and I would like. I want both on this tree. This year, Having applied the calcium and then use CalMag through the, the season, essentially just keeping the, the levels of calcium up, along with the magnesium and fertilizer. I think just fantastic, fantastic extensions of you know, nearly six foot, of nearly a meter in many directions. I have pruned this tree back as well, just to re redirect some of the energy, but. I'm getting some some fantastic growth. Hopefully, after next season's growth and thickening of the branches, trees should be able to go quite comfortably into a, a large bonsai pot in 2026. And I'll update you then.